Uh, but uh, open your Bibles, if you would, please, to the book of Luke and chapter number 24. Uh, Luke and chapter number 24. I started this series uh, some time back on uh, Does It Matter? And I realized that a lot of the things that I am hitting are things that maybe would be considered by some people to be, well, these are basic uh, truths. Everybody knows all about this. Everybody understands these things. Uh, Why in the world are you focusing on it? Well, I've been watching something develop that has really got me tremendously burdened. And, and I hope I get the names just right, so please forgive me if I misspeak. And if I do misspeak, I'll try to go back and get it corrected. But uh, back a few years ago, <coughs> there was a, a guy that was a well-known uh, Christian uh, songwriter. Uh, I believe his first name was Mark. I'm not positive on that, but his last name was Gungor. Uh, won awards for writing Christian music and then came out and basically said since I was not personally present when God created the world I'm not sure it really happened the way the Bible says it so basically he declared that he was uh, considered himself to be a Christian agnostic now I don't know how in the world you can be a Christian agnostic but that's what he said he was and then just a number of, uh, uh, briefly, just in the last few months, uh, Josh Harris, well-known conference speaker, uh, mega church uh, uh, pastor, writer of books, uh, basically declared he's no longer, he doesn't consider himself a Christian anymore. All the books that he wrote, I guess, uh, uh, he no longer believes in his own books. And just recently, I guess his name was Marty Sampson, one of the writers with uh, Hillsong uh, Music uh, wrote has written many of their praise and worship songs. Uh, come out and says that you know he's just not sure what he believes in anymore. Just doesn't know if he believes anything. And and I see these things and I begin to wonder what in the world is going on. Why are people that have been at the forefront and have been well known all of a sudden just saying, well, you know, I just don't know if I believe in that anymore. I don't know if the new wears off or, uh, or, or what. Or if their, their attachment to Christianity was emotional rather than uh, a faith-based. I, I don't know. But I do believe there are some basic things that we really need to comprehend and understand that will help us if we ever have these moments of uh, a crisis of faith. Now, I'll be honest, there have been a few times that I had to come face to face uh, and say, you know what, is what I say I believe in, according to the Word of God, can it be trusted? And I'm thankful that uh, that it, it's always been trustworthy. And uh, <clears throat> that's a great, great thing to be able to bank on. But whenever you do face one of those moments where you begin to question things, we need to really have some some basic foundational truths that we can stand upon. Today, we're going to look at, does it matter, the bodily resurrection of Christ. Now, I know you hear this a lot of times at Easter, and uh, uh, and uh, but I want to share, share it with you today from a little bit of a different vantage point, I hope. And so, uh, Luke chapter 24. Find your place at verse number 33. Let's stand together as we read the Word of God. We're going to read through verse 43, and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says this, And they they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. 
Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word. I pray, Lord, that it would just speak to our hearts and lives now. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. You know, uh, I don't know really what caused me to do it, but this past week, I spent some time reading some of the old, uh, uh, older books that I've got, uh, not necessarily going back a hundred years, but uh, some of the preachers that were very prominent when I was very, very young in my ministry. Uh, I remember there were several guys, that there were two guys in particular, and they actually were both members of the same church. One was Pastor of the church and one was an evangelist out of that church but uh, I can still remember on the early morning hours as I would get in my truck and take off down the road and I would be uh, heading toward uh, my first stop to clean an incinerator and I'd turn the radio on and all of a sudden I'd hear this voice come on and say good morning welcome to the bright spot hour this is Dr. Harold B. Seitler from Greenville, South Carolina. Man, I love to hear him. Amen. Wow. And then an evangelist out of his church also had a radio broadcast that would come on. And, and he'd come on and say, uh, This is Oliver B. Green from Greenville, South Carolina. And I got to hear him in person a time or two. Wow, what an exciting preacher. Man. He can preach the stars now. And you know, I got to thinking, we don't have that same kind of breed around anymore. And uh, that sort of burdens me sometimes. Because they really made a difference. Oliver Green said this, and, and I read it and it just blessed my heart. He said, the resurrection was the greatest bombshell to ever explode in the face of an unbelieving world. That's a good quote. What a bombshell. I mean, all the Pharisees had it all figured out. The Romans thought they knew all about it. And yet when they put Jesus in the grave, three days later, He got up again. Amen. And uh, say, well, you know, I don't know if I believe in that or not. Well, let me just give you some things today that I hope will help you. Now, you know, uh, man, that, that bold proclamation from a previous era is the kind of things that we need today. You know, I, I'm afraid what happens today is we have a tendency to sort of talk around topics rather than just uh, facing issues uh, without apology. You know, uh, l let me tell you something. And I'm not trying to be ugly, and I'm not trying to be uh, judgmental on anybody. Listen, God gives every preacher their own style. I guarantee you no two preachers need to be exactly alike. Amen? Okay. But when you come here to Rents Baptist Church, I'm not here to give you a fireside chat. I'm here to preach the Word. Okay? And guess what? Sometimes it's going to make you happy. Sometimes it's going to make you sad. Sometimes it might even make you mad. But at least you go home with something. Amen? Amen. I mean, that's, that's the thing that I want. Listen, I mean, we, we need to just go ahead and, and, and not just talk around things and, 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 you know, speak in generalities. We need to look at some, some really great truths. Here, here's, a, here's a good thing to ask ourselves. Did Jesus really rise again in his body? Is it really important for us to believe in a literal resurrection? Okay. Now, I believe the Bible's got some answers. So let's jump right into it real quick. Number one. The bodily resurrection of Christ is the foundation of Christianity. L listen, go ahead and understand this. If you don't have a resurrection for Christ, we've really got no basis for what we believe in. <coughs> We're just another religion. One of many that has some lofty ideals and some, uh, uh, and some truths that would hopefully improve people's lives if they followed it. But listen, the bodily resurrection of Christ changes everything. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 verse 17 says this, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ 
our parish. Listen, if there is no resurrection of, of, the, uh, of the Lord Jesus, then there's no hope of a resurrection of any of those that died in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. But listen, i got good news. He arose. Amen. Therefore, we do have hope. And I thank God for that great reality. And uh, listen, the deity of Christ depends upon it. If Jesus, if the resurrection isn't true, then Jesus is not who He says He is. Okay? Not only that, the veracity or the truthfulness of Scripture depends upon it. You know, if, if we just get to the point of we're saying, well, you know, uh, and this is one of the problems I think that's going on with a lot of these uh, uh, people that are so-called leaders all of a sudden just walking away and abandoning their faith, they want to look at the Scripture and say, well, I like that part over there, so I'll believe that part. And I like this part over here, and therefore I'll believe that part. This part over here, that bothers me a little bit, so I'm going to reject that. And this part over here doesn't make me feel good, so I'm going to reject it. Listen, it's not a smorgasbord. You take the whole thing or you doubt the whole thing. You believe it all or you doubt it all. Listen, the, the veracity of Scripture depends upon the bodily resurrection of Christ. And the promises of Jesus depends upon it. Uh, John chapter 2 verse 18 says this, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. He said, listen, you destroy this temple, you destroy this body, and guess what? I will raise it up in three days. You can't believe the word of the Lord Jesus Christ if he really didn't do it. So the deity of Christ depends upon it. The veracity of Scripture depends upon it. And the promise of Jesus depends upon it. Listen, if you've got a Savior that you can't trust him to keep his promises, then guess what? You don't have a Savior you can trust. You know, as human beings, we make promises sometimes that we don't always keep. We try to. You know, we, we've we been making promises for years that when the grandkids turn 13, we take them on a mystery trip. I'm beginning to doubt the wisdom of that. <laughs> I got to thinking in five years when Layla turns 13, I'm going to be getting ready to turn 72. I'm not sure I'm going to ride the Superman ride when I'm 72. I wrote it yesterday. Amen. Now I got news for you. I'd like to see some of y'all get on that thing and ride it. Now that would be an experience. I mean to tell you, they strap you in that thing and you're just hanging down, looking straight down. You can't even see where you're hooked up. And man, that thing does every kind of course screw and loop you can imagine. And uh, it's something else. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep all them promises. And Lord knows if Jennifer decides to have youngins, oh my soul. Uh, you know, uh, I'll be in my 80s then. And so, uh, 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 <laughs> but the idea is this as human beings, we don't always keep our promises. But listen, Jesus is not a mere human being. If he doesn't keep his promises, everything depends upon it. So we need to understand that. So the bodily resurrection of Christ is the foundation of Christianity. Also, in the bodily resurrection of Christ, death is defeated. Oh, I love that. Death is defeated. Romans chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 says this. Concerning His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. By the resurrection. I mean, all of that that it tells us about the Lord Jesus Christ all was built upon the reality of the resurrection. Going back and quoting Oliver B. Green again. 
He said this, and man, I, I could just imagine in my mind hearing him saying this when he first said it before it was written down. And, and I found myself getting excited as I, I was in my study. He said, death did not conquer Christ. Jesus pursued death into its dominion and came forth conqueror. I like that. He said, man, I'm going to follow death right down where you live and then I'm going to beat it and come right back out again. That's exactly what he did. He said, man, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. Listen, there's a lot of things I have a hard time wrapping my head around. But I've come to the conclusion that the Word of God can be trusted. And because I know Jesus experientially in my heart, I know that He can be trusted. And by the way, I know I'm dealing with a living Savior, not a dead religious leader. Okay? And so death did not conquer Christ. I mean, He conquered death. In fact, it was not possible, according to Scripture, it was not possible for death to hold Him. Acts chapter 2 and verse 24 says this, Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible, it was not possible that He should be holden of it. Man, I like that. What's not possible? I don't know all that transpired between the time that Jesus died and he rose again. But I've often held it in my mind at least that, boy, when Jesus died, Satan went. We beat him. Now we just got to hang on to him. First day passed. All seemed well for the devil. Second day passed. All seemed well for the devil. As the third day was coming to a close. The old devil says, oh no. Oh no. This is not good. He's getting up. We've lost. (laughs) Man, I like that. What a great truth. I mean to know that death could not hold him. And for the believer, death is abolished. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 10 says this, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You know, I know I've shared this before, but I love what D.L. Moody said when he was getting close to the time of his death. His associates were gathered around him, uh, and he was on his deathbed, and he called him close. He said, now, gentlemen, in the not-too-distant future, you're going to pick up the newspaper. He says, and it's going to say on the headlines, D.L. Moody is dead. He said, don't you believe it. I'm going to be more alive than ever. And every time I stand at the graveside of of, of someone who who has died in faith in the Lord Jesus, I'm always comforted to know this isn't the end. Their body died, but they're still alive. Why? Because death is abolished. In Jesus. And not only that, according to 1 Thessalonians, I love what it says. It says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to be with the Lord in the air. Man, I don't know about you, but I get excited about that. Listen. Uh, uh, the folks that folks that die in their faith, I got news for you, they're more alive than ever. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You know the hardest thing I've said this before, but the hardest thing I do as a pastor <coughs> is preaching sermons. I mean, preaching uh, funeral sermons. Funerals are the hardest thing I do because I feel. The emotions of the family. But yet, my goodness, it sure is easy 
when I know that person knew Jesus. Yeah, I'm, and I'm able to give them hope, and I'm able to feel hope for myself. What a great truth that is. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And listen, the bodily resurrection of, of Jesus, of Christ, allows us to have a personal relationship with Christ. Aren't you glad for that? We can have a personal relationship with Him. First John chapter 1. Now, now, if you read the first chapter of the Gospel of John, and then read the first chapter of uh, the first epistle of John, they're very similar in the way they start. But I like 1 John, the way it starts. Beginning with verse number 1. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show it unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. You know, I see that your joy may be full. Listen, when you lose a loved one, it's never an easy time. But listen, when you realize they're in the presence of Jesus, and if you know Jesus, you're going to join them there. That can give you joy. That can give you joy. There's more to eternity than just this life. But I love the way it's worded there. It says we've seen Him with our eyes. We've looked upon Him. Our hands have handled. In other words, remember when Jesus was there with the disciples? He says, touch me. Handle me. See Flesh and bone. You know, you can't touch it, but here I am. Not only that, he ate with them. Man, what a great truth that is. You see, if all we've got is a dead Savior, we can only uh, experience a mystical relationship. Back when I was in Bible college, we had to study... Uh, a variety of things. I mean, different religious groups, different uh, denominations, uh, world religions. And I remember reading about some of the world religions and I thought to myself, wow, that takes a lot of faith to believe in some of that stuff. You know, Hinduism, Buddhism. You know, you, you, you go through this life and you die. And... Uh, since you didn't quite do it right, you've got to come back and do it again. And depending on how you live this life, depends on how you come back in the next life. If you did real good, you'll come back maybe as a person. If you don't do it real good, you might come back as a cockroach. By the way, devout Hindus in India will, uh, that are wealthy will have someone walk ahead of them with a broom sweeping their path because they're afraid they might step on one of their relatives. You know, it takes a lot of faith to believe in that kind of stuff. And you know what? Their leader is dead. They got nothing to look forward to except a mystical relationship. Listen, I got news for you. I know Jesus is alive. I get to talk to Him every day. I get to hear from Him every day. You might say, you literally hear His voice. Well, every time I open the Word of God, I hear from Him. The Holy Spirit lives within me and testifies that He's a real and He's alive. I mean, all of that is a great truth. That gives me comfort. I'm able to uh, experience Him on a day-by-day -day basis. And uh, we're going to have eternity to praise Him and dwell in His presence. Man, I, I don't know all that entails, but I'll tell you what. Heaven's going to be a wonderful place. Amen. I'm going to be able to Get up there in heaven and once again see guys like Harold B. Sattler and Oliver B. Green and Lester Roloff and Adrian Rogers and 
W.A. Criswell and some of these other great guys that stood for the faith and see them. But I'm also going to be able to see Jesus. I'm also going to be able to see uh, all of those in my family that I love dearly that went on to be with the Lord. I'll be able to see them again too. I'll be able to see some of the people that impacted my ministry in my early days. What a wonderful reality. We're going to have eternity to praise Him. And then let me close with this thought. <clears throat> the bodily resurrection of Christ opens the door to saving faith. Opens the door. You, you, you can't come to a saving faith in Christ without comprehending. Listen, here's a Savior that really, He's alive. He's alive. He conquered death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we read a little bit of this portion uh, earlier. But it says this, beginning with verse number 12. Now if Christ be preached that He rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you're yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. What a great truth that is. What a great truth that is. Man, I'm glad that's in the Bible. Uh, listen, uh, without the resurrection, we, we, don't, we don't have a message of eternal hope. Man, if he's not alive, what do we got to look forward to? If he couldn't conquer death for himself, how in the world is he going to conquer it for us? I haven't told this story in a long time. The first time I ever took my went white water rafting, my son Matt was probably about nine. Went with some other people and we were heading out the river. We were going down the Nantahala River. Now that particular river does not require a guide. So of course, two Baptist preachers, you think we're going to hire a guide? Why no, we know what we're doing. Huh, dumb. They gave us instructions, says now this first rapid, you got to make sure you stay over to the side or you will get hung up on the rocks. Do you understand? Yeah. So what did we do? We got in the raft, went right straight through the middle and got hung up on the rocks. Could not get the raft off the middle. We both, uh, the, uh, the, the, two, uh, the two of us, the preachers, we got out of the raft so that we could sort of get the raft so it would get going again. And uh, uh, the only one eventually that was only still in the raft was my son Matt. His son and both preachers were out of the raft and all of a sudden the raft starts going. So me and the other preacher's son, we dive and grab a hold of the raft. And we're going down the river. And finally got inside and I said to the other guy, Brian, I said, hey, where's the paddles? He said, they got them. They're standing up on top of the rocks with, a, with a paddles. We were literally going down a river <laughs> with no paddles, okay? And uh, finally we got over and I was able to jump out and, and drag my feet along the ground and got it over to the side. And I'm thinking, how in the world are we going to get them uh, out of those, uh, that rapid? About that time, the pre other preacher comes walking up. I said, how'd you get off? He said, well, I made it. He says, I said, well, where's my son? He said, well, he's still on the rocks. I wanted to slap him right at that moment. I got back up there. And Matt's standing there and says, Dad, I want off. I said, son, I want you off too. So I finally figured out and I got me a big old limb. And, and, and got there and, and, and used it and, and, and braced myself. And man, the water was just flowing real hard. And I just worked my way over there. I got all the way out close to where the rapids were. I turned around and I said, boy, jump! He said, I said, jump on my back! Come on! 
But dad, I'm afraid. I said, listen, if I made it out here, I can get you back. And he jumped. Grabbed a hold of my neck. And we worked our way back over to the side. You say, what did you do? We went and got in the raft and finished the rabbits. Okay. But you know what? There's an illustration there. I had to show him, I can make it through this. And if you'll trust me, I'll get you back through it. All of us are going to face death. Jesus already went through it. Amen. All we got to do is trust Him. Just hang on to Him. Just, just reach out and get a hold of Him and don't turn loose. Listen, the Bible says that faith comes by preaching. And our primary message is the resurrection of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I got news for you. If all I ever did was preach messages that never mentioned the resurrection of Christ, I would be doing you a great disservice. Because the resurrection of Christ opens the door to saving faith. I know I just used this passage in closing maybe last week, but I'm going to use it again today. You see, belief in the resurrection is one of the foundational things when it comes to us trusting Christ. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe with all my heart the pivotal point of history was not when Jesus was born, although that was very important. The pivotal point of history was not even when Jesus died on the cross, although that was absolutely a necessity. <clears throat> the pivotal point of history thus far was when Jesus emerged from the dead. Because that made everything else a done deal. That accomplished the whole thing. His resurrection sealed the price he paid for our sin debt. His resurrection allowed him to ascend into heaven and offer his blood on the heavenly mercy seat. Good question for you and I today. Do you really believe in the resurrection of Christ? Do you really believe in the resurrection of Christ? You say, well, preacher, I'd, I'd like to. Let me remind you one time there was a man that came to Jesus, needed a healing for his boy. And Jesus said, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I believe if you'll come to Jesus today with that kind of an attitude, Lord, I believe. But you help my unbelief. I believe he'll help you unbelief. But Jesus rose again. That you got hope. You got a promise. You got something to look forward to. More to eternity than just this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever trusted Jesus? Today's a good day to trust Him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. Thank you for being here today. Let the Spirit of God deal with your heart. Do you know Jesus? He, he died for you. Hallelujah. But He rose again for you as well. He conquered death so that you don't have to fear death. He conquered death so that you can accept that it is not final for you. Just trust Him. Just trust Him. Lord Jesus, do your work in each of our hearts and lives. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.